Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Monday, February the 5th, 2024. Monday, February the 25th. Wow, Monday already, y'all. Okay, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all the updates and notifications uh, for my daily recaps. Let's go to the shock. Shock. A mother's love. A mother's love. Laura hugs Nicholas. And little Lace was like, hey, hey, Laura. How you doing? Good to see you, Laura. <laughs> Nicholas is all broke down talking to his mother. Um, asking her what happened. Was it Esme? And she said, yes. And he goes, then it's all my fault. Spencer was killed because I took AIDS. It's all my fault. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really was, right? But guess what? Esme would have gone after Spencer and Trina even if she had AIDS. And that's the truth. She just wouldn't have gone all unhinged but when Trina bragged about them going to Paris, oh, Esme was not going to let that happen. She really wasn't. Um, but Spencer giving her baby away was definitely what she had nothing to lose at that point. So, you know, Laura talks to him about, you know, I know you can be a, a better man. You could be the father Ace deserves and Nicholas is, you know, um, it's too late for me. I've made nothing but bad decisions. I'm going to just leave Ace here with you and I'm going to disappear. You all will be better off without me, emotional blackmailer. And Laura's like, if you do this, if you leave like this, then I won't have any respect for you. Mm -mm. She's like, Ace deserves a better father than, than that. And she says, Nicholas, you must take responsibility. I am so proud of her for saying that to him because Nicholas has always gotten away with murder just like Spencer, but I, she goes, you must take responsibility for your actions. You need to get this cleared up the proper way. So then in the end, you can be there for your son. He goes, but what if I have to go to prison? She's like, then that's your punishment. You kept Esme captive up in that parapet. You did that. That's a crime. Your punishment is going to be your punishment. Oh, she, oh, but she was just like, you walk out that door, oh, Lord. So uh, we're teetering with uh, Alexis. Sam is there with her. You know, Gregory was with her in the beginning, but Sam was there and Alexis was like, I have to do Spencer's obituary. Oh, and she didn't want to do it. And who would, right? Torn up about it. So her and Sam kind of talk through the best of Spencer because uh, Sam said, keep it positive, mom, because look, Spencer did some things. Precocious, he rigged the elections. And isn't it funny? Alexis knew about that. And I, I think a number of people know Spencer rigged that election. Yet Laura is still mayor. Except. Didn't Laura have to get reelected a few years ago when Cyrus tried to tamper with that? I kind of think so. This is about five years ago, right, y'all? Hmm. Daily recap fans, spark my memory. I think Laura had to be reelected as mayor. And this time, a real, she, she won it for real. I really believe that. But, you know, clear up my memory on that. So um, Sam and Alexis come up with the beautiful obituary. You know, Alexis did all the writing, but Sam gave her some ideas and directions to go on with Spencer's attributes. Now, Sonny 
and still trying to rack his brain. Who knows his operation inside and out? And you know what? When I think about it, it is going to be Jason. A brainwashed Jason. So we're going to get days and weeks of Steve Burton hardly speaking a word. He'll just be. But obviously he can't shoot like Jason because Jason is a sharp shooter. And with whatever they're doing to mess with his mind, he's not that accurate anymore. Okay. So it's going to be Jason. Um, but anyway, Sam and Dante, before Sam goes to Alexis, they go to Sonny's and Dante, you know, they give their condolences and uh, Sam ends up saying that she was going to go and and comfort her mother at the invader. So Dante and Sonny talked and Dante said, you know what, something's going on here. And Sonny's like, no, grief is, you know, a horrible thing. He goes, no, you're right. Grief can be a horrible thing, but I'm sensing something else is going on with you. What is it? And so Sonny says, there was an incident on the island. And they kind of talk it through. And Dante says, look, you feel this is an inside job? Then any and everybody, you know, that is involved with you, we're going to have to question each and every one of them, right? So... Sonny's like, thanks, you know, well, thanks for your help and, and input. And Sonny's yelling at his security, he had a security on the phone saying, you don't find out, I'm giving you 24 hours, find out who that shooter was. And if you don't, you're fired. <laughs> so we'll see if they find, oh, they not going to find out in 24 hours. And since we know the person what the, wasn't Brick, who cares if he fires them? We didn't see him in the first place. Um, but we're going to see where that goes. Now, Jagger, whose name is John Cates, and um, John Jagger Cates, and I guess back in the day that was Robin's friend. He was friends of Robin, and of course a completely different actor, different ethnicity too. But you know, who remembers, right? I had to look it up, and I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> you know, there we go. Um. So he is interrogating, you know, trying to get answers from Anna and Jordan who want him to deputize them and bring them on board, bring them in, and he won't do it. He goes, no, you guys have already compromised my case enough, right? So then they're like, well, look, you share with us and I'll share, we'll share with you. So needless to say, he told them stuff they already knew. They barely told him anything. And so at the end, he ended up saying, all right, Anna Devane and Jordan Ashford, you're both under arrest <laughs> for obstructing a case. So anyway, let's see, you know, they're not going to stay arrested, but he's going through the motions of arresting them or pretending to arrest them. And we have, let's see what else we've got. Oh my God. Lucy obsessing. Scott. I mean, Marty, Marty, you're not calling me Marty, Marty, Marty. And she's questioning her assistant and her assistant is like, yes, I told him where you would be today. Yes, I told him he could call me on my phone if he couldn't get you. And Lucy's like, but he hasn't called. And I'm like, see, this is why. Lucy, this is the wrong hey. This is the, oh, she's just a nightmare. And I'm happy that we didn't have to see the rest of deception there as Lucy has her meltdown for nothing, right? So um, Tracy is waiting for Gregory at the Metrocorp, um, at the restaurant. Martin's at the bar. So before Gregory gets there, Tracy goes over and still putting that seed of doubt in Martin's head. Seed of doubt, seed of doubt. And my, um Tracy goes back to her because Martin says, I don't want to hear another word from you, lady. <laughs> you know. Uh, so Tracy goes back to her seat and Gregory does arrive. And Gregory says, I'm sorry I'm late. You know, she he was talking to Alexis and, you know, offering her condolences. And she goes, For what? And he goes, Oh, her nephew Spencer Cassidy is dead. And Tracy was like, Wait, what? And it 
she was acting like it hit her. And he goes, I'm so sorry. I did not know you two were close. Otherwise, I wouldn't have broke it to you so casually, right? And she goes, we weren't close. I barely knew him, but it's still a tragedy. And I'm thinking, yeah, but Tracy, you never affected by anything. But she was still watching because now by this time, Lucy's tracked Martin down, GPSed him, right? And they're talking and Lucy is like, give me another chance. Please give me another, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, you know me, I can't handle Lucy, conversations with Lucy. I'm fast forwarding most of it. But in the end, Martin ended up telling her he deserves better. He deserves better, which he does, you know, because she's not telling him what she and Scott are actually up to. Of course she's not, right? But he knows it's something. So she, Tracy is watching this whole thing. Gregory had to get up because uh, he had got a phone call and his doctor is giving him a referral to a specialist. Hopefully it's the specialist that's going to find out. Because, come on, I don't think they're going to have Gregory die. I really don't think they are, right? So, anyway, Tracy says, yeah, go, go. You know, make your phone call. Get your appointment. And she's looking, because Lucy goes, goes storming out, crying, getting into the elevator. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Martin. So, Tracy is looking. And then, somehow... Uh, she goes over to him and she says, I owe you an apology. And I'm trying to figure out where she's going to go with that. You know, who knows? Who knows? You know, sometimes they make Tracy half have a heart. And then other times, you know, Tracy don't have a heart. So Tracy goes storming back to the shoot or where Deception's supposed to be shooting, where that bad hay was. And, and Scott's still there. Right? Because Scott was there before she left to go track down Marty or got the lead on Marty. And she, he goes, okay, why are you crying? My dog's clearing her throat, ignore that. You know, wait, wait, what's going on with you? If he did something to hurt you, I'm gonna go lay him out. She goes, no, no. He said he deserves better than me. Oh, yes, he does, Lucy. Yes, he does and Scott's like what oh no oh no Lucy you are good enough for any any man which yeah okay no Scott so of course he pulls her close and you know they're in this passionate kiss because Lucy it's like Tracy said Scott Baldwin and her they always end up falling back on each other in a relationship with each other never lasts but they get involved, which is exactly what's happening now. Exactly what's happening. I saw them kiss. I said, mm, ugh, okay, gag me with that, folks. Gag me with that. So pretty much that is all that happened. You know, Laura did convince Nicholas to turn himself in and Dante arrested him. And Laura says, <clears throat> your lawyer will meet you at the precinct. Uh, his lawyer is going to end up being Martin. Because I think his lawyer was Martin. Martin was Nicholas's lawyer and Valentine's lawyer. Getting ready to cough. So Martin's going to end up having to, to meet them there. So that's it for GH today. Let's go to comment corner. Comment corner. Let me turn on my stopwatch. Lisa says, Willow cannot, I mean, would not be happy if Michael went after Nina withdrew. He did make the right choice. Lisa also says, they said they were not bringing in anyone to fill in for Nicholas Chavez while he was on the movies uh, or the net, whatever the other show he's doing, series. Uh, glad Eden McCoy is back. She is Jocelyn. The fill-in Courtney Falk did a great job. Hopefully they'll find a spot for her. N.K. Rose says, I just realized uh, that along with si sharing siblings, Spencer is both Dante and Sam's cousin. 
Yes, he was, right? Uh, Nina needs to stop. Ava should not have had Nina in Sonny's house without his permission. Uh, Carly uh, should have given Olivia more of her mind than she did. Well, you know the thing about Carly right now, she's still being affected by Bobby's death. She's realizing, you know what, if this ain't worth it for me, it just ain't worth, you know, the stress, the battle, you know, she is still trying to deal with her emotions where Bobby, with her mother dying. And I, I respect that. And then Lisa says, I can't believe Nicholas brought is back with Ace. Wow. He just shows up like he's not a wanted man. I bet Laura gets him out of trouble. With Esme being considered dead, they will drop the charges. No, I, Martin's going to be the one to get him out. And then Will, Willie says, Steve Burton will be back on March the 4th. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be Jason. Brenda says, all Ava had to do is tell Sonny Nina's in the room. Ava can't save Sonny and Nina's marriage. Also, another thing, you talk too much. Then Ava talks too much. Because first when I read that, I said, but you cannot talk too much. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to do is talk. But no. And then I read, oh, you're talking about Ava. Uh, P. Merle says, I know. Why is Ava telling Sonny's business to Nina? Ava knows better. And Lisa says, Sonny will not be happy with Ava running her mouth about his business. He already told Nina it is not her business at the bar when she was asking him. Dacia says, um, that is, she's, wait, what's she going to do with Charlotte's behavior? Charlotte breaking into Anna's apartment and her hotel room uh, destroyed. Will Laura take Charlotte to the police station and turn to turn herself in as well? Uh, why they always enable Charlotte and her behavior? She is spoiled. Um, they'll never hold her accountable for her actions. Laura will have Esme, uh, Laura, always, Laura always have Esme to turn herself in for breaking, or always she had her, for breaking and entering into someone's house, but not um, Elsa's house, not taking her into the police station to turn herself in. You're talking about Charlotte. Um, breaking into Anna's apartment and hotel rooms, um, belongs, belongings, and destroyed her belongings. Laura is a hypocrite. Maybe Laura feels that Charlotte's a minor, and it's her parents, her parent, you know, their responsibility to put her on the straight and narrow. I don't agree with it at all. Charlotte needs needs to be held accountable for her actions, which she is not. She's not done acting up. Um, Dacia says. Laura takes Esme to the PCPD to turn herself in for breaking into Nicholas' house. She uh, will, will she do the same for Charlotte? Lisa says, I guess nobody is going to make Charlotte take responsibility for her actions. She is still not done with Anna yet either. That is so true. DL says, LOL regarding the Jaggered recast. Um, no wonder Carly didn't recognize him. Huh? <laughs> I'm a fan of Antonio uh, Sabato Jr., but he wasn't asked to come back. And going by his recent story on Instagram, he won't come back anyway. Oh, okay. Now, if we can get used to the character of Blair on One Life to Live going from an Asian woman to a Caucasian woman, we uh, we would get used to this i don't remember blair being agent asian but you know what one life to live i didn't watch all the time i was all my children and if i had nothing better to do one life to live and then general hospital but really it was all my children general hospital uh p Murrow says right and the captain didn't oh wait a minute uh ron says it's funny how Esme was knocked out with a monkey wrench, but managed to get up and still stick Spencer with a needle. P. Merle says, right, and the captain didn't come to until the cavalry arrived. 
I'm uh, still not clear how Esme planned to get herself off the boat. She would be dead weight or he would be dead weight if unconscious. The captain was inca incapacitated. Who's driving the boat anyway? The writers could have been a little more realistic. Anyway, the grief is real for Spencer. Esme's passing um, was more of a relief. You know, remember the drug she drugged him was to make him more docile. Um, let's face it. She probably knew the life rope boat was somewhere and was going to, he was going to do what she said, or she was going to lead him onto the boat. Something he was going to have, which is why she probably is the one that swam him to shore. Brenda says she didn't need it at the time for Laura. Wait, she didn't need that at that time for Laura lost. I understand why. I don't understand that. Um, Oh, she didn't need Cyrus doing what he was saying at that time. But Cyrus needs to know, stop quoting scripture um, and be your dirty, scheming self. People will know who you are, uh, who you really are. Well, people already know who he really is. Lisa says, I don't think anyone believes Cyrus is a religious man. He tries to keep it up still. I know. Cindy says, once Esme knocked out the captain, there was no one steering the ship, yet the ship appeared stable. If Laura had only known where the lifeboats were, she may have been able to paddle, or not Laura, if Trina only knew where the lifeboats were, she may have been able to paddle out in one and bring Spencer and Esme, uh, I guess, back before the current took them out. Look. Uh, there must have been a cook on board who could have helped. Now, if I was able to find the lifeboat, let's say I'm Trina, found the lifeboat. I see the love of my life, Spencer, floating over there. I see the chick that just tried to kill me floating over there. Spencer floating face up, Esme floating face down. Who am I going for? I'm going for Spencer because Esme's part mermaid <laughs> and she would find her way out of that water. I would never have brought them both back. I only would have brought Spencer back. And then Lucy says, the recap lady um, has the best channel on YouTube. Thanks for all you do. Why, thank you, Lucy. Um, and Lisa says, I love the recaps on this channel. Thank you, Lisa. And Lucy says to Lisa, and comment corner. That's right. Comment corner, comment corner. So anyway, that's all the comments from comment corner today. Thank you all for commenting. Uh, I'm back in town and I will be back tomorrow for another daily recap of General Hospital.